گانا تو میرے نس نس میں ہے میرے خون میں ہے میں نے جب ہوش سنبھالا تو میں اسی اس وقت سے یہ جانتی ہوں کہ نہ معلوم کیوں میں سر سے الگ نہیں رہ سکتی فونڈلی نون ایز میڈم اور مدام نور جہان واز گیون دی آنریفک ٹائٹل اب ملکہ ترنم وچ مینس میلڈی کوئن بائی ہر لیجنس آف فینس آئی لوڈ ہر سنگنگ آئی لوڈ ہر وائس اینڈ آئی لوڈ ہر اسٹائل پرانی تو وہ میڈم نور جہاں تھی جو اتنی زبردست گاتی ہیں بہت اچھی and her film, her singing career, they spanned six decades, almost the entire history of Pakistan. And to this day, you know, female singers copy her style, her singing style and her songs endlessly. She began her career in British India at age nine, before the continent's diverse populations were divided up into two nations. On the one hand, it was Hindu majority India and on the other, Muslim Pakistan. It was the British commander-in-chief in 1946 wrote at that time that India must be partitioned into Pakistan and India because that is what we need to have a buffer against the Soviet Union and we have to buttress it with the mercenary traditions of the past coupled with the Islamic um, injection of the future. In Islamic injection was meant to ensure anti-communism. So early singers like Noor Jahan, who moved to Pakistan, helped to heal the pain of partition, I think. Music forged a new identity by uniting diverse populations who had been brought together in the aftermath of a brutal upheaval. Music became the backdrop of daily life and, you know, its musicians were beloved by all. Music has chronicled all the major events in Pakistan's 64-year-old history creating a very specific Pakistani sound that has embraced many, many different genres. If you ask me, it is through women that actually music has been carried forward. I know that's not uh, the popular understanding because of course the great Ustads were all men. Many of the greatest performers that I've seen in my lifetime, ranging from the great classical Roshanara Begum, to the great Ghazal singers, to some of the most popular pop musicians. They have been women. Pakistan is a country of paradoxes that, you know, where we see um, a lot of very old values and everything. And yet women who pull off the cultural scene in Pakistan are the female singers and the actresses. Nat Sarkar ko sunate hai. Many of the early um, female singers who came to Pakistan um, had their roots in the courtesan culture of uh, Indian royal courts. And when they moved, many women performing in public were frowned upon because they became associated with prostitution, you know, the courtesans, etc. And so many women singers of these, of the early generation particularly, started to deny their um, origins in that culture, often to protect their children, their families. My mother was a very private person and never spoke about her personal life. But uh, when her book was published, only then we, her children, got to know a bit about her. She had been employed at the court of Kashmir for many years. <laughs> There is a very deep-rooted hypocrisy um, which is about women who perform. In our context, because women who performed um, went outside the domestic domain and therefore could not be controlled, um, the issue there becomes that of fear of women who cannot be controlled. There was a prejudice, especially when I was a young woman. And the prejudice did not stem from the general public. The prejudice, prejudice stems from the elite of this country. 
not from the general masses. I pretty much abandoned my dreams to become a classical singer on Pakistan's national stage. As the daughter of respectable middle-class household, I realized my family would not approve. Well, I've performed um, classical music here in the States, as well as on trips back home. And uh, here I've evolved a style of music uh, called East Meets West with jazz musicians. Well, I trained in the uh, North Indo-Pakistani classical vocal tradition for many years. I attended the same women's college as did my friend Sara Zaman. She, of course, has always stayed in Pakistan and served the cause of uh, classical music there, although she also did not become a professional singer. And I would take part in the festivals that uh, where all the big ustads would con congregate and it would be a huge honor to be a part of that. So I've been performing f from those uh, forum uh, regularly in the last 20, 25 years. Madame Noor Jahan, Malika Pukraj, Roshanara Begum, Bombay Wali, Farida Khanam, Suraya Multanikar, Iqbal Bano, who were women who defied all the taboos and became really big stars in the 1950s on Radio Pakistan. Then later they became uh, playback singers for um, burgeoning film industry. And these women really inspired the next generation of female singers passing on their knowledge to young women like Sarah and me and endowed us with the passion to learn how to sing. In the 70s, just after the 1971 war and the debacle in um, Bangladesh, um, the mood was very, very low. We had the uh, POWs, so the mood of the country was so somber and so depressed that uh, PTV was trying to uh, have all these uh, uh, taranas on TV, which would uplift the people, uplift the masses. So I remember I recorded this song, which played like a million times, uh, called Agar hai jazbaye tamir zinda, to phir kis cheez ki humme kami hai. We find these uh, female performers being promoted by the state mainly, and then come General um, Ziaul Haq, you know, and his Islamist politics and everything. They just wanted to politicize television and radio, and that is exactly what happened. It was Islamization of uh, all media. Um, women were required to cover their heads. And we find a very strange transition at that time that women performers like Abida Parmeen become very dominant on the scene. She was singing, you know, very, very uh, um, forceful Sufi poetry, which was attacking the collusion between the state and the clerics. There were a few poets who were banned like Faiz Ahmed Faiz and Ahmed Faraz, you were not uh, allowed to sing them. And both speak very differently, but they do speak to people. And they speak of their pain, and they speak of justice. I think more than anything, people ask me, why do you Faiz only sing Faiz? And my answer is, why do I sing Faiz only? They are the ones who have given but uh, strangely enough, a lot of new musicians came up during Zia's time, which was probably the most repressive uh, time. I would say it was a subversive activity on the part of those singers. In 
my case, uh, I was banned because I said, I love you all. You know, I just said that to all my fans. That was a little hard time for me because I was banned for two years. Adika, it's very beautiful and the sound of the other people is good. And the young people, मखान में पाकिस्तान में एक ही शायद उसके बाद तुम्हें कोई देखी नहीं कुछ भी जैसी इतनी आवाज उतनी पर्सनालिटी जैसी किसी कोई नहीं सुनता पाकिस्तान में दीगा जैसी लेकिन अब फॉर द लास्ट कपल ऑफ इयर्स यू नो थिंग्स हैव चेंज्ड ड्रास्टिकली बिकॉज़ ऑफ़ द सिक्योरिटी रीज़न्स और पूरी म्यूजिक इं that's why we are only doing corporate shows, multinationals, we are not doing concerts and that's our oxygen for us. It's again a paradox. It's really a paradox of the corporate culture that despite all its negativity and everything, it's the corporations that are keeping the culture alive through Coke Studio and women um, singers, especially the young ones, have a place um, from where they can get their music out to young audiences. Zeb and Hania and in Cheap Monks, yeah, Misha Shafi and all of those Coke Studios, awesome. Uh, this is a singer who made a career in a region where the Pakistani Taliban had emerged as a force throughout the past few years. And despite the Taliban's decree against singing and dancing and anything on Islamic, she continued to do what she loved, which was the singing and making records. The current Islamic trends, the aggressive, the most aggressive, absurd trends, have no roots and neither in the minds, nor in the hearts, nor in the motivations of the people. They're still injected. When I was young, I would like to listen to the Farida Khan. And God bless you, God bless you. And now, I don't have any other shops. The state has um, uh, paid lip service to uh, uh, a certain extreme variety of Islam, um, which is not Islam, by the way, and it has um, um, just pandered to them for purely political reasons. Islam में गाने बजाने की इजाजत बिल्कुल नहीं है. Music जो है वो शैतान की अलामत बताया जाता है. I've never felt limited um, uh, in Pakistan, you know, uh, by, you know, Talibanization or the, you know, Islamization or anything like that. But um, maybe it, it did, does exist. Maybe if it wasn't there, I'd be doing a hell of a lot more shows and I'd be, you know, doing a lot more. <laughs> enormous resilience in our people. If there's one great asset in Pakistan, it's the people. And I, I see it demonstrated over and over again, even when they're cowering, even when there is the worst of outrage, even when leaders let them down. Whatever happens, somehow there will be a moment in which one human being will prove that we are okay. I'm not